Welcome back again to the Twins Weekend Wrap with the television play-by-play voice of the Minnesota Twins, Dick Bramer. I am Derek Hansen, and it's brought to you by Jefferson Lines. And, well, Dick, I, I guess I'm in a good mood as a Twins fan. Four games ahead of the Cleveland Indians in the American League Central. But, boy, there is a little bit of – it's like fishing. I got some nice fish, but there's a couple that got away there. Well, you're speaking, I think, of the Detroit series. And I think we should give the Tigers some credit. Not much is expected of them this year. And I think Gardy and his coaches have done a great job with that team. That might be, uh, other than the Twins having the best record in the major leagues, uh, I think that might be in the top five uh, uh, overachieving performers uh, in baseball so far this year. The Tigers are playing much better than I thought they would. And uh, they played the Twins tough in the matchup so far. Uh, yeah, they're. I think we've raised the bar sufficiently, fairly or not, to expect the team uh, the Twins to uh, you know take three out of four, maybe even sweep the Tigers. But I mean, give give the Tigers some credit; they're playing pretty good baseball, and they got a couple of good young uh, starting pitchers. You know that's for sure. And you know, of course, we know that uh, Ron Gardner knows baseball, and his pitching coach Rick Anderson not too bad either. So we we know that for sure. A little scary uh, coming out of yesterday's game with uh, Nelson Cruz. A little bit of a problem with his wrist, was it? Martin Perez. Uh, just a rocket off his foot. Uh, as far as that's concerned, nothing too serious, it looks like, though? Well, we'll wait and see. He's going to have a Nelson Cruz is going to have an MRI done today. Uh, the biggest concern, I think, is uh, the hamate bone, which is uh, lower in the hand, high in the wrist, however you want to uh, put it. It's in the you know, fleshy part uh, opposite uh, the thumb in your, in your hand. And, uh, you know, we noticed, at least we thought we noticed some discomfort in the last homestand in the Houston series when he winced on a couple of swings. And Justin Morneau, who I was working with, uh, pointed it out that, uh, you know, that didn't look good. And then he had uh, the, the hand come off the bat in, I think, his first swing of the ball game yesterday. And uh, I think it's been bothering him for quite a while. And we'll hope for good news on the MRI. Regarding Perez, he took a line shot up against his foot. It's just a bruise. I'd fully expect him to make his next start uh, Friday in Seattle. I hope so. Boy, because he has been such a story. I mean, the way he is able to come from that left side, do what he does, and he's kind of a nice compliment for the kid that we're going to see tonight in Jose Barrios. Yeah, you look at the the really good teams uh, in recent baseball history anyway, it seems like most of them have a good right-left combination. Now there's a little bit uh, more pressure, I guess, on Perez because he's the only lefty in the rotation and the only lefty in the system that's, um, you know, capable of helping this team in the uh, starting rotation. Uh, there's nobody really in AAA that the twins are counting on to uh, step up and uh, be a help this year from the left side. So uh, it's been a, a really wonderful start to the season for Perez. He gave up a couple of home runs yesterday, but came into the game with only two home runs allowed. So uh, the twins will ride this out as long as they can, but yeah, you're right. It's a nice, a combination to have, uh, you know, a lefty righty combo like Perez and Barrios. And then, uh, boy, the other part of the rotation too, Kyle Gibson goes tomorrow night to what a performance he had last week. And Jake Odorizzi, what more can you say? I mean, this staff, we talked so much about the power in the lineup, but certainly the uh, starting four for sure have been unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, exciting and fun to think about uh, the home runs that the Twins have hit and wonder uh, whether by season's end they'll hit 300 home runs. They're almost certainly not going to hit 300 home runs, but they can get into the playoffs as long as they get starting pitching like they've gotten in the first quarter of the season. Uh, ultimately, you need to you know, catch and pass Cleveland, and to do that, you got to be Cleveland at their game. And right now, Cleveland, uh, even with the injuries, the strength of their team is their starting rotation, and the Twins are going to need to match up with them. They've still got 16 games left with the Indians, so if, if Perez, Odorizzi, Barrios, and the gang can t- continue to do what they've been doing, uh, then I think the Twins can and will pass the Indians this year. Dick Bramer with us, our Twins Weekend Wrap, sponsored to you by uh, Jefferson Lions. Derek Hansen with you on the Mighty 790 KFGO. And let's chat a little bit. C.J. Crone, I, 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 he has been a pickup. And I remember a couple people saying to me, both whether it be uh, callers to uh, my shows or you know, just some friends of mine saying, boy, didn't we learn this lesson picking up a Tampa Bay first baseman last year with Logan Morrison? And I texted one of my friends back. He has, uh, said, uh, well, we know that C.J. Crone is not Logan Morrison, and that's probably a good thing. He has been a nice find. Well, he has, and I know internally there was some concern uh, in the Twins organization, you know, how this team would perform without Joe Maurer. Joe's a completely different type of hitter than C.J. Crone, 
And Crone's just got immense power. And unlike Logan Morrison, uh, you can't get E.J. Crone out the same way uh, three times in one game. He has the ability to make some changes. He can use the whole field. Logan Morrison was a very one-dimensional hitter, and the Twins never really saw enough of that one dimension, the power, because he had a lot of holes in his swing. Well, C.J. Crone will strike out a lot, but power hitters do that. The thing I'd like to uh, to see from C.J., he, he's not exclusively a pull hitter. He's got the power to hit it out to center and to right field. He's done that, and it's just fun to watch him hit because when he hits one, the ball goes a long way, uh, and if it doesn't go a long way, it doesn't take long for it to sail over the fence. He had a, a bullet uh, in the doubleheader on Saturday that, my goodness, I, I said on air yesterday, I'm glad I've never had a home run call because I wouldn't have had time to, to blurt it out before it hit the seats. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a very good point. The other part of his game, too, that's impressive, and I guess we're just spoiled as Twins fans if you you know go back to Herbeck and McKavich and Maurer certainly was great with a glove towards the end of his career. He's really good with the glove, too. He's done a nice job saving a lot of errors from the left side of the infield with the low throws, really soft glove hand there on the, on the forehand side and the backhand side. He can uh, chase down pop-ups, and you know he will tell you that he – you know, is doing better at the plate and performing better in the field because he's run out there all the time. He's never really been a full-time first baseman. When he was with the Angels, he had to split first base with Albert Pujols because Pujols wanted to, you know, play first base occasionally and not just be a strictly a designated hitter. And then with Tampa last year, too, he had to split time. So he's getting a chance to play first base. Uh, they're running him out there, you know, just about every day. And I think uh, the team has, you know, seen the benefits of running him out there every day, both uh, in the field and at the plate. That is interesting. A lot of position players say that, that uh, the DH thing, it, it's hard for them to get in the game. You know, David Ortiz made the adjustment nice after he went to Boston, but there's certainly a lot of players who like to be in the field. Well, you know, just think about what it must be like, particularly if you're younger, like CJ Crone, if you're Nelson Cruz, well, you're a designated hitter. they you know, they had a chance to put him out in the outfield uh, when we had the Phillies and the Mets when we played by National League rules, and he, you know, he never got close to, to getting out in the field. So he's a designated hitter. But if you're a younger player like C.J. Crone, you want to play because even if you have a bat at bat, you strike out with the bases loaded or whatever, you're still engaged in the game. You're running out to a position, and you, you have the luxury of, you know, not forgetting about your strikeout but dismissing it because you got to focus on the task at hand, which is to scoop out those low throws and, you know, be the cutoff man on a relay. And so you're, you're, you're still engaged with the game, but when you're designated, uh, the designated hitter, you know, all you, all you can do is, is sit and wait for your next at bat. And when you have struck out in a key spot, sit and think about everything you did wrong. So no, it's not an easy adjustment for a player to make, to go back and forth. Well, tonight and really this week should be a lot of fun at Target Field before they head on this uh, West Coast swing here. And you're facing, it's just amazing. You look at the Angels, a lot of guys who, uh, well, certainly two for sure, are going to be in Cooperstown, a lot of talent that they'll be facing throughout this week. Yeah, the Twins uh, traditionally have done a really nice job pitching to Mike Trout. Uh, Pujols is still a threat. Uh, Shohei Otani, who came here to Minnesota only to uh, be discovered that he needed Tommy John surgery. He never played against the Twins uh, here in Minnesota, so it'll be a, uh, a treat for Twins fans to be able to watch him hit. He won't be pitching this year. So the Angels are an interesting team. They're a sub-500 team, but uh, it's always a, seems like a fun series with the Angels because they've got some marquee players and, as you said, some guys that'll be enshrined in Cooperstown uh, when their careers end. And, of course, Barrios goes tonight, which is always fun. I think I sense from Twins fans, whether I meet them in person at the ballpark uh, or just, you know, people I talk to or I engage with on, on social media, I think Barrios has gotten to the point where, where fans now make note of when he's pitching because he is a fun guy to watch when he's on the mound. He can overpower hitters. Uh, I, you get the sense that on any given night, he could throw a no hitter. That's how good his stuff is. And I think, you know, it's, it's like it used to be years ago with Johan Santana. Before that, Frank Viola, Scott Erickson, guys who were at the very top uh, of the game and pitching in the league. And I think Twins fans now at least sense that 
I know people nationally do. You know, they get a lot of buzz when Barrios goes out on the mound in the national media because everybody recognizes what a talent he is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that tonight. I guess last thing, I have to ask you my weekly Miguel Sano question, and you know, a lot of question who might have to go down when he does come up, but he's still playing in the minor leagues right now. It's just a matter of time, I would guess. Yeah, a couple doubles, about a couple of strikeouts yesterday, and whether it should be or not, and I don't know that it is, but I think his arrival uh, with the Twins might depend a lot on what the Twins find out with Nelson Cruz. Uh, if Cruz has to go on the injured list for any length of time at all, that might accelerate Sano's arrival here. The Twins could uh, put him in the DH spot, have him play occasionally at third base. But um, again, let's hope that uh, the news is good regarding Nelson Cruz. Uh, maybe all it need, all he needs is a cortisone shot and a couple days off, and he'll be able to stay in the lineup. That would be good news for sure. Dick, thanks so much. Uh, again, we'll talk to you next Monday. Looking forward to it. We'll be on the West Coast in, uh, where, where are we going to be next Monday? Anaheim. <laughs> That's but right. we'll be here. All right, looking forward. I pr- really yep. appreciate your time as always. You got it. Dick Bramer with us. Television play-by-play voice for the Minnesota Twins. Again, the Twins Weekend Wrap here on KFGO, sponsored by Jefferson Lines. Jefferson Lines, your number one bus experience for over 100 years, serving North Dakota and cities throughout the Midwest. Derek Hansen with you. Twins Baseball, the pregame show at 6 o'clock. We'll wrap up the drive time news hour here on the Mighty 790 KFGO.